Today I'm going to show you and teach you how I built this amazing bow for $2.34. So if you've been interested in making a bow but don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on material, this is a fantastic place to start because the wood costs $2.34. The big question, what's the catch? Well, the truth is you can't make a super heavy poundage bow. It's going to have a pretty light draw weight. And secondly, the cost refers to the material of the wood. Tools are gonna cost more money. But if you're watching this, you probably have a few tools lying around that can help, or you can go thrift some for 20 or $30 to build the entire bow. I made some previous videos where I show how to do this. Lastly, my intention is to show you as simple as possible how to make a working bow. This will be fantastic for youth bows, or a light poundage adult bow, or bow making practice that doesn't break the bank. Although I love nerding out about bow making and getting down to the nitty gritty, this video is not for that. And straightforward, this video is how to have have a decent result on a bow with low effort. Before showing you how to pick out the right piece of wood, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, My Heritage. I just received the My Heritage DNA testing kit. The testing kit was super self-explanatory and very easy to send off my DNA, which could sound sketchy, but there is no fear because My Heritage will never sell your information. Now all we have to do is mail this and we'll get our results. I do find myself getting slightly nervous actually because I have no clue what I'm gonna find. Just think about it. Do you know exactly your heritage, where you're from? I once was told that I have a hint of Native American in me and that I'm white. I literally know nothing else. After a couple short weeks, my heritage results are back, so let's check them out. Kramer, you are 49% Irish, Scottish, wow. and Welsh. 24% Scandinavian. I had no clue. 15% English or 4% South Italian. South Italian. <laughs> okay, I wonder what else is the more. Oh, there it is. West Asian. West Asian. And Balkan. Balkan. I feel so much closer to Brian Buffini. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My Heritage has a promotion going on right now, so click the link in the description to get free shipping. Thank you, My Heritage, for sponsoring today's video. So welcome to the bow build that's cheaper than your coffee. But don't worry, the bow build doesn't have caffeine yet. It gives you a rush that's even greater than any hit of coffee. Yeah, definitely. I really like coffee, but it definitely gives you a rush that's better than any hit of coffee. First, we need to select a piece of wood that works. You can either use a two x two, two x three, or two x four. Ideally, the board is straight. It has fairly straight grain with few knots. And remember, you don't need an entirely clear board. You just need a little section that you're gonna pull the bow out of. Keep in mind, you may need to look through 10, 20, maybe even 50 pieces of wood. Because we're using wood that's not ideal, we want to give our bow every possible chance of being successful. In order to do that, we're gonna make a bow that's a little longer than normal. I made mine at 68 inches and I'm 6'3". A good rule is maybe three to five inches shorter than your total height is how long your bow should be. After cutting your board down to length, now we can cut it down to the proper width. My finished bow was 3 8 inch on the limbs. So for the roughing, I cut it down to half an inch on the table saw, but left extra material in the middle of the bow for the handle. This handle section is 8 inches long. I like to clean up the saw marks on the sander to keep the wood from splintering. Now you can almost already see the bow shape coming to life, but we still haven't tapered the limbs. Halfway down each limb, make a mark, and then taper them from there down to three quarters of an inch.
By using a chainsaw file, I'll cut a 45 degree angle into the sides of the bow limb. This is used so that there's a solid place for the bowstring to hold. I like to clean up the grooves with a little sandpaper. I used the word tillering earlier. Tillering is the process of getting the bow to bend evenly so that it shoots comfortably for you. My favorite and simplest way to do this is to use a tillering gizmo. They're super easy to make or you can purchase them. The tillering gizmo has a nut hammered in so that this pencil can thread through the piece of wood allowing it to mark the part of the bow you want to remove material. A different method to accomplish the same thing is to use a straight edge, and wherever the gap is the biggest is where the bow's bending the most, so you don't want to remove wood there. But wherever there is no gap or very little gap is where you want to remove wood. This will help you make the whole limb bend evenly. And if you don't have a tillering string or a bow string, you could just use paracord for this project if you would like to. Of course, I prefer something nicer, but for this one, you can get away with it. Repeat the process of slowly removing material and exercising your bow until it pulls to the right draw weight and the right draw length for you. I would be careful to not go over a 30 pound bow because we have no backing, there is no growth ring chased. We're keeping this build simple, remember? But the downside to that is that you can't make a super heavy poundage bow this way. As you work the limb down, round over all of the corners. This will help splinters from raising while working with the material. It's okay to sand the back of the bow and the belly of the bow because we don't have a backing. And sometimes you'll have a knot in the material. I can completely see through this limb. That's okay because with the tillering gizmo, it'll still tell you where to take off wood and automatically accommodate for weaker or stronger parts of your bow limb. Take your time and you'll make a great bow. I like to tiller before shaping the handle. Functionality first and then feel and aesthetics later. My favorite methods to remove material is to lightly use a sander or to use a cabinet scraper. Just remember, the less aggressively you remove material, the greater your chance of success. Use a sharpie to mark where you want to remove material. The sharpie will soak into the wood, so all you'll need to do is remove the sharpie lines and retest the bow's bend. I like to lay out my bow off of the center. I'll put a rough C for the center, and an inch and a quarter above that will be where my arrow shelf is. Where the center of the bow is, is where your hand goes. Once my arrow shelf is marked out and the center of my bow is marked out, now I can start shaping the handle. I use a fine tooth saw to cut in the arrow shelf, maybe some chisels, whatever tools you have, just don't cut this in too deep. Shape the handle to your liking, and then you can shoot this thing.
Now the bow is done. You could apply a finish if you like to. I'm just adding a little bit of wax just to make the grain pop. Any sort of woodworking finish would work great. You could even go to the extent of polishing the bow if you would like, but it's not necessary. It's time for the first shot on the $2.43 bow. Feels real good on the draw. <laughs> yeah, baby. The question remains, will this hold up for any period of time? Well, so far I'm at about 200 shots, somewhere between 200 and 300 is my best estimate. And I'm shooting it very, very comfortably. And it's a 20 pound bow for those of you who are interested. I think you could possibly push that around 30 or so, depending on your draw length. If you have a shorter draw length, you actually can make it even heavier. And as a matter of fact, I see no stress fractures it is looking great like nothing will change at all and i'll give you an update maybe in a youtube short or something after shooting this a couple thousand times i like to break all rules when it comes to bow making and my goal is to give you that itch because i know how much i've enjoyed bow building and archery and why one and i want someone else to have that much fun too thank you so much for watching stay shatterproof i'll see you on the next video